All right, so our, our course uh, and this part of the material is covering the introduction to virology and, and uh, the study of viruses, their classification and how they are replicated, their general life cycles. Um, and it really is just an introduction to a lot of the terminology and the basic pathways. There are a lot of differences and all kinds of variations. It gets very, very specific. And even for the same type of virus that belongs to the same class or family, there can be all kinds of different versions of what goes on uh, and some of what goes on isn't even completely known for for many of the viruses so but i thought i'd talk about the coronavirus and what is known in general about um coronaviruses now what's the name even mean that that sort of thing uh, and then a little bit about its life cycle so you kind of can tie it in with the the generic material that we're covering in the class so first off the name everybody's talk everyone's talking about a coronavirus and we use the term um COVID-19, typically to discuss it. So what does that actually mean? Okay, so um, CO for Corona, VI for virus, and then the D uh, is for disease. That's not, and then there's a 19, uh, which stands for really 2019. That's not its real name. Um, its technical name is SARS um, COV 2, um, which SARS is the severe acute respiratory syndrome. Uh, and then coronavirus, number two, related to one um, found in 2002 as well. So that's kind of the, the name. All right. Now, also part of the name, corona, you know, virus. So corona means halo. And so you can think of the halo, uh, so you have light you know, around the sun. That's kind of where the name comes from. And for the virus, uh, what do we know about it? Relating it to the terminology that we have so far in the course. Um, so it is, first off, it's a, let me fire so you can see it. Um, sorry, I can't find the color I want. It's an enveloped virus. In the envelope, so we have a membrane here. And embedded in that membrane are proteins here. Uh, an S protein. It's called a spike protein. And the spike protein uh, is what allows binding to specific cell receptors. That's how the virus can enter the cell, essentially. Or in this case, the viral genome can, can enter the cell itself. And we'll get to how the membrane forms it all. So it's enveloped surrounded by actual phospholipid with proteins embedded in it. Many of those proteins, it codes uh, itself. We'll talk about its genome. The genome is, uh, it's an RNA virus. So it is a single stranded RNA plus virus. That's its genome. Uh, as its genome goes, it's fairly large. So um, this has a fairly large genome. For an RNA virus, um, there are some major structural proteins that are part of this. There are ones called the uh, S, which is our spike protein. There is an M protein. Uh, I'll get up in a second. An E and an N. So S is a spike protein, which helps in the binding. The M is a membrane protein. And the E is an envelope protein. This one is the most abundant one. Uh, the envelope protein, is, there is not that much of it. And the N is the nucleocapsid protein. So that's gonna be the protein that actually binds to the genome, the RNA, uh, and forms its, its capsid structure um, before it's packaged in the membrane, which is, we call it, its envelope. Okay, so we have this more, more of a complex structure to it. 
So as far as breaking it down, what's the structure of the coronavirus? Enveloped membranous virus with proteins in it. The spikes are proteins that are binding proteins. They're unique for binding now to uh, epithelial cells. of the respiratory tract. So, epithelial cells in your respiratory tract have certain receptors. Those receptors are not to bind the coronavirus. Those receptors have other jobs. But this protein mimics the target ligand for that receptor and binds to it and then initiates a process that then allows fusion. So we get fusion of the envelope with the cell membrane. And so this is, you say, your cell. This is your uh, epithelial cell. That allows then the, this is the, um, the nucleocapsid proteins. that are surrounding the actual genome. So, so uh, I'm gonna bring different color. Yeah, so you can just say that. The genome. Once they enter into the cytoplasm of the cell, the nucleocapsid proteins then will be pulled off, right, and then the genome gets exposed. The genome, you know, is an RNA. Now, as a single-stranded plus RNA, it essentially is messenger RNA. A characteristic of the coronavirus um, um, genome is that it actually has uh, a five prime cap. So remember, I took a backward GTP. It has a poly A tail already. Uh, and so it's ready to go. So we can immediately get transcription. Sorry, we can immediately get translation. Take it right up there. Of the viral proteins. Right off the bat, just immediately. Now, one of those first uh, proteins uh, is going to be, so very early protein, um, is going to be a replicase. So, while translation can be occurring, the replicase can come in, and what it can do is it can make then a you know, complementary strand that it can use as a template, and that template can then be used to make more copies of the genome. Okay, so that's going on. So we got copies of the genome. We can have, there's a replicase transcriptase complex that forms. Transcriptase, that's a complex between them, that then can be transcribing more copies of the RNA while there's tra uh, uh, translation going on uh, with the ribosomes. And so um, you're getting both the uh, templates and then you're getting the actual copies of the, the genome that you need. What then is going to happen is you're going to get more from the actual genome. You're going to get different proteins than, that are going to be expressed. Okay, So you'll have spike proteins created, the membrane proteins, the envelope proteins, and the nucleocapsid proteins. So the N, the nucleocapsid proteins, you know, they are going to then go ahead and surround, you know, the, they bind specifically to the, the RNA and they start to surround it forming the, the capsid structure. It's not as random as I'm doing it here. You know, it's a very coordinated specific process that makes it a very uh, unique structure. What they're going to do, though, is then bind to, they're going to come down here, um, and bind to, like this, um, the endoplasmic reticulum. So this is the nucleus, and this is the uh, E, 
R endoplasmic reticulum. The other proteins, they're going to bind to the endoplasmic reticulum as well. So you'll get the membrane protein. Oh, sorry, that, that's the spike. It's supposed to be the spike protein. You'll get membrane proteins and the enveloped protein, you know, as well, all binding here to the endoplasmic reticulum. What's going to happen is they're going to be packaged up then ultimately through budding, a budding process that's going to join uh, a vesicle with the Golgi apparatus. So this is essentially going to be the Golgi apparatus here. And what you're going to have then essentially is uh, all this is going to get pulled inside. So you're going to kind of get the, um, the genome pulled inside, you know, here. Surrounded by the nucleocapsid protein, you're going to get these other proteins, the spike proteins and the envelope proteins help coordinating the process of forming an envelope. And then you're going to get additional budding process that's going to then create for us it's supposed to represent the spikes. And then there's going to be an additional bud, you know, around it. Uh, this will then fuse to that vesicle. Will then fuse to the cell membrane like this, and then we'll get release of the viral particles. Okay. Exactly how um, this particular virus, you know, affects uh, the host and does the damage. Uh, there are studies, you know, still looking at um, how how it works. There are two other kinds of SARS. Um, there's one that was a, a Middle Eastern uh, SARS that was uh, a few years ago, and then there was another one um, uh, years, a couple years before that. Um, and they work in similar ways, but di but different. Not not all exactly the same. One thing that the COVID nineteen um, that I had read does is that it can actually uh, one thing it can do is fuse certain cells together. So some of the cells that it infects, uh, it can then incorporate some of the proteins. So some of these proteins, they're normally being associated with the endoplasmic reticulum. Some of them can then get embedded in the cell membrane itself, and it can actually cause a fusion of this cell with another cell. So actually uh, another, like a healthy cell, now is actually fused, you know, like to this cell, which already has this mechanism going on of replicating the virus. And now this cells will start to replicate the virus as well. And you get this like large mass of multinucleated cells that are all infected, um, but yet they're hiding out from the immune system. So your immune system uh, isn't seeing that this cell was infected because of the, the process in which it was joined with another cell. Uh, so there's there's that. Um, there's also the triggering uh, by some of these proteins of your immune system to release extra cytokines. So some of those proteins that can cause um, parts of the inflammatory response, uh, the, the stimulation of other cells to come into an area of infection, and that can actually cause uh, more tissue damage uh, as well in a particular area. So there's a lot of things that, that are happening. That's not really part of what we're our classes or what, what we're going into. It's just kind of the, the basics of you know what is the virus, a little bit of the the cellular molecular biology of it that we've actually been studying in the class and to kind of be able to put it together. So um, you should kind of know the basics of this, obviously, because it's topical at the moment and it does fit in with the, the material that we're covering um, uh, on this exam. Just know for some of the viruses as well that were on your study guide, you know, whether a particular virus is a, a naked virus, like an uh, adenovirus that also causes flu, the, com the, the common cold, essentially, um, pneumonia, so adenovirus, uh, causes the common cold, um, but it's a, it's a naked virus. Um, it's a double-stranded DNA virus, um, and it has a icosahedral capsid. So it's very different, yet it can do some of the same things, different symptoms that would 
result, but actually some symptoms would actually be the same, you know, overall, uh, but it's a very different kind of virus. What I want you to know then is for the different types of virus, not necessarily the symptoms, that's not what we're studying, the, the, the human um, pathology of it. What we're studying is, you know, the, the structure of the virus and how essentially its life cycle works and is replicated. So for this kind of organism, or technically not organisms, it's just a, a viral particle, um, structurally, what is it? how is its genome replicated and then how are its genes transcribed and then translated that that's what you really need to know here it's going to be different right this is double-stranded dna so double-stranded dna uh, needs to be replicated in the nucleus um, where the proper enzymes are for it um, transcription can occur there but then translation will come back out in the cytoplasm then uh, molecules are going to have to come back into the nucleus and then the process is going to come back out of the nucleus once the proteins are assembled. So there's a little bit you know, difference going on there. Um, it doesn't have the envelope. It's just a, a naked virus. It does have uh, proteins that are kind of like the, the spikes. It has these uh, little fibers that stick off it. So the adenovirus uh, actually has these little proteins that stick off it. Uh, now, even though this is all pr a protein capsid within the double-stranded DNA, you know, genome, you know, inside, uh, but that they're what's used to bind, you know, to um, two cells and then get into the cell and bring the genome inside. So just kind of know from a couple of the types of virus, some of them are on the study guide and a little um, uh, kind of just break down just a list, you know, of what type of virus it is. Is it double-stranded DNA? Is it single-stranded DNA? Is it single-stranded RNA? Is it enveloped or naked? That type of thing. Just the, just the basics of it. You'll have a question or two uh, on the exam um, of just kind of like a matching uh, sort of thing, which, what, what characteristics go with which virus. And that, that's going to be pretty much it.